स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम द सॉन्ग वॉज गोइंग ऑन श्री राम कृष्ण वॉज एक्सप्लेनिंग If I only can pass away repeating the Durga's name, how canst thou then, O blessed one, withhold from me deliverance, wretched though I may be? Then he said, "One must take the firm attitude. What I have chanted Mother's name, how can I be a sinner any more?" I am her child, heir to her powers and glories. The attitude towards a particular, that is, our where our heart is set, where our mind is set, and it is set in such a way. it doesn't shake that is called attitude my attitude it comes through repeated practice or habitual way of doing or with right understanding which doesn't shake a attitude is created what is my attitude towards a particular thing oh hmm. suppose towards the vegetation what is my attitude when we move about in the forests of the ashram here we understand the value of the forest how much necessity we have the warmth go out if 1 km away we see the we are not able to bear the heat when we come here we see we can bear the heat now by repeated understanding of living with nature we develop a particular attitude towards it now in india we see street dogs uh, everywhere barking shouting fighting and what attitude we create constantly seeing them is entirely different uh, oh we have a contempt towards it but in if you go to some places in the west or something like that you will see there are no street dogs at all every dog is with a master it is moving about uh, you immediately create a respect an attitude towards that here you develop a contempt there you develop respect even we were in training center pilurmat thousands of crows there all around and most of them will be haunting over the uh, mat because they get plenty of food uh, all the time so every tree tree is full of crows so when we sit for in the classroom during the training center period all crows will be shouting ka 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 morning till night when the sun sets slowly it will decrease and night there is a peace and anybody carrying they become so free anybody carrying anything said they should snatch away and go away 
like eagles there freely and everybody gets annoyed with these crows and whole ashram is below the tree its droppings are there every day they have to clean and oh what a nuisance it creates that was the attitude one day when revered swami ji told about the crows he told crows live average 80 years so many of these crows have seen direct disciples <laughs> <laughs> from that day everybody that rest suddenly it has changed the respect for the, the gain each crow they will say how young it is how old it is a little whitish it is looking oh it is must be old one this must have seen uh, direct disciples <laughs> so a salutary attitude towards the crows this is attitude how the attitudes are formed so attitudes is what we are in relation chip to a particular thing uh, so shri ram krishna is telling you come must karma cultivate a firm attitude towards the things he is telling about the he said one must take firm attitude what i have chanted the name of mother how can i be a sinner any more i am her child heir to her powers and glories now i am relating myself with god and just like a child approaches the mother or father fearlessly it is it is this relationship father and mother is unrelated to its behavior it may be behaving wildly in the school in a different way in the playground when he comes to home and mother mother kid can mother can never say i will not give you food today even if she say, says he knows mother will not deprive me she sees me suppose the child is seen fighting with other children in the playground making lot of nuisance when he comes home mother will be i saw you fighting there that is not the way this i will not give you food she may say i will not give you food but the child smiles no oh, you may say you will never deprive me of my food because i am your child whatever i am whatever i might have done i am your child the relationship that form clear understanding my mother will not deprive me of anything whatever may be my behavior whatever may be my relationship with others my relationship with mother is form and eternal friends come and go mother is there forever so this attitude he doesn't bother what his external life is there as long as his mother is taking care of him same thing he has shri ramakrishna is telling i am child of divine mother i might have done some small mistakes of telling lie or stealing away somebody's food what does it matter it's all in the play but my relationship to enter into relationship with god it is a second stage stage just like a stage primary school is a stage middle school is a stage higher school is a stage college is a road so like that there may be inner small gaps but it is a you crossed certain hmm. first stage is coming across in relation before the relationship forms 
I am introduced to God. Slowly, I am getting accustomed to the God and its concepts. Hmm, what is God? Parichaya. First stage is Parichaya. Second stage we come is Sambandha. With God, Sambandha. The third stage is intimacy. Love and intimacy. The fourth stage is freedom to demand and accept. So much intimacy that God has to reveal himself to that person. So much of intimacy, so much of love, so much of faith, so much of dependence. So that is the, these are the last stages. First stage is just coming in understanding and contact. Uh, when a new brahmacharis come, uh, they will be given Thakur Mother Swamiji's life. Read this, read this. He is getting acquainted with the terminology used. He is getting acquainted with the spiritual life. He is getting acquainted with the religious understanding of God. Uh, various aspects of God, how we enter into relationship. So, one must have a definite attitude. Uh, I am her child, heir to her powers and glories. How clear you see. I am her child and heir to her powers and glories. I am her child. So he, that person has already entered into relationship with God. Uh, now, after entering into relationship with God, in any aspect, it is inseparable because it is standing on the platform of reality. I may enter into deep relationship with one my colleague or someone, I cannot remain separated from that person and I want always to be with that person. But it is based on the false idea of mindness. I can never be one, a day will go, we have to part because they are separate, they have come together, they have to part. What is composed has to decompose. What has birth must have a death. So two people coming together, be it husband and wife, child and mother, whoever it is, they have to part one day. But because they are different entities, they have wrong understanding of mindness. With God it is reality. It is one reality from where we are separated and where that is our home, we have to go back. We are separated from it and we have to go back. So it is eternal. When I come in relationship with God in any aspect, it is eternal. I am going back to my home, eternal home, Shashwata Sthana. God is my Shashwata Sthana, eternal place, my real home. So, when I come in relationship with God, there is never breaking again. Because it is what reality is. I have thought wrongly that I am separate from God, I am different from God, I am unrelated with God. I never knew God is there. All this is unreality. I am a dream world. When dream breaks, I see myself and God are one. Never we parted. Never we found ourselves strangers. We are one eternally. When I did not know I am related to God, then also I was related to God. Now, I rediscovered, I had lost my identity, so the relationship was broken. I became identified with a body, 
which is perishable of this world. And thought, nobody is there for me. Then, because wrong identification with body made me detached from God, not be aware of God's existence itself. Now, that body identity has lost. I have gained my spiritual identity. That is the one important aspect of loving God. If you love God more and more, you get your lost identity. You are moving towards reality. If you love anybody in this world, any object in this world, it is a false creation. One day false will remain false. False, its falsehood is revealed when we part from it. Hmm. When my own, one who, whom I loved as my own, part and go away from me, then I will realize my falsehood of relationship. Oh, it was all false. Neither child was mine nor husband, nor wife. I was never related to them. I was in a dream world. Now they are parting from me. They are parted. The unreality or the falsehood has revealed itself when they part. Oh, it is revelation. Revelation of the falsehood. Similarly, by loving God, I am revealed of my identity. God reveals himself of his oneness with me. So it is a revelation. Hmm. So here, uh, I am here to mother. Mother's powers and glory is a reality. So, when reality comes into picture, all unreality falls off. When I have done bad, is as bad as it is. It was good. Good also had no place. Good and bad was only of the world. When I was related to body, when I am not no more related to body, good and bad are same. As long as I would dream, good and bad were there. When I woke up, good was as much false as it bad was. Because that world never existed. Dream world never existed. Even when I was experiencing dream, I entered into a dream when I slept. And I saw something good, something bad. Everything was a play. Good was as unreal as bad was. Uh, but when I am in dream, it is entirely different. Good and bad are not same nor unreal. When I wake up only. So when I wake up to the reality, I will see that. Now, you understand what is relationship with God? I am child of mother to say a jiva that I am child of divine mother. What an elevated state it is to enter into relationship with God. I am waking up from the dream of this world to a higher reality. Just like waking up from the dream when I sleep, the dream I get. When I wake up to come to waking state, what is the difference? Like that when I wake up, I coming into relationship and repeating the name of God, loving God and all on the reality basis. I am transcending the nature and going beyond. So, if you can give spiritual turn to your tamas, you can realize God with its help. Force your demands on God. He is by no means a stranger to you. He is indeed 
you are very own. How Sri Ramakrishna is bringing, opening up the reality. The falsehood of world is seen only in the light of the reality. Till you wake up, the dream world is real. As you wake up, as you wake up, you are not at wake up, awaker. As you wake up, the dream world you are leaving behind and transcending it and coming out. Like that, in this dream, your relationship with God and all are reality. Hmm. If you can give a spiritual turn to your tamas, you can realize God with itself, force your demands on God. He is no more but he, he is by no means stranger to you. Uh, now, just now, I am coming in understanding there is a thing called Sri Ramakrishna. A person called Sri Ramakrishna lived. To get that firm faith is avatara and to get the firm faith is avatara varishtha. I am brought up in a tradition where I Naturally, by birth itself, I have been taught Krishna and Rama are avatars, incarnation of God. After giving me understanding that Krishna and Rama are avatars, incarnations of God, I have been introduced to, to his, their lives. Krishna's life came in my life. Later, afterwards, I was taught he is God. Rama's life, Ramayana, I could uh, read or understand or hear. After I was taught, he is Avatar, in God incarnate. So, my attitude to Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavata and all is entirely different. First, I came to know he is God. Then I am reading God's life story. But in case, in case of Sri Ramakrishna, it is reverse. First, I came to know there was a person, historic person, moving a boat in Calcutta as Sri Ramakrishna. Now, the second part, he is God incarnate. It takes little time to absorb, to get that faith. Hmm. Oh, he was born there, uh, Kamar Pukor, he grew, moved about. I can feel, because I am in the same age, Krishna Rama lived in some other yuga. He is our historic person, just hundred years old, <laughs> not much. Hmm. One or two centuries, within a, two centuries, the whole play went on and to accept it as incarnation of God. Somebody says my grandfather is incarnation of God or Gandhiji is incarnation of God. It's something like that. For, for when we first hear, hmm, then slowly the understanding develops. How we start introduced, how we extend how our understanding becomes vast and how we slowly like uh, feelers the cockroach and all will stretch the feelers and see and then move like that we have that feelers we feel then we start moving now here, the important part is, he is your own, he is not a stranger, God is not a stranger. We came to know about God and understand God much later in life. First we were part of this world, I was a body, totally body only. Then. Somebody introduced, there is a thing called God. How to 
hold on to that, how to understand it, how to take it as reality, because this I have seen unreal as real already, and holding on to this as real. And when real comes, it becomes unreal for me. There, God is not a stranger, my child. God is your very own. Means what God? Where is, where is my very own? My very own is my papa, mummy, and Cadbury's chocolate. It is reality and my own. Ah, how can it be? this God, whom I, I don't even see nor know, is your very own? There, the Sri Ramakrishna is introducing the reality. Hmm. He is giving feed, feeders to your feelers. He is feeding the feelers. You start feeling, oh, there is an object, there is an object. And then you move to eat that food. First it touches and sees the feelers, it will stretch. And then it puts its mouth. So, the these things are first fed with the feelers. And then Sri Ramakrishna is introducing God to us. You can exercise. Here we see our nature obstructs us. We have developed certain nature. We have built up our personality, lives after lives in a particular way. In some tamas is more predominant, some sattva is more predominant, in some rajas is predominant. So, those who are sattvic, if you tell them, God is your own, then you have no problem. There is acceptance. Uh, oh, probably it is true. Let me see if you start the journey. If you tell a Rajasik person, Oh, God is your very own. God is there. Uh, he has already created because of Rajas is activity and attachments. He has, finds it difficult to accept because of the attachments he has already got in the world. Sattva has released from the attachments. It wants to attach itself to a higher reality. Rajas is very difficult. He doesn't want to leave what he is holding on. Hmm. He understands, but he doesn't want to leave this. He wants to go with that. I want to give, get mukti. I want eternal life and all that, along with my wife and children. That is the understanding of the rajas. Dhamma says, I am ready to fight out. Hmm. Anybody trying to take me away from my family towards God? God is real. God is going to give you more joy and peace. It is going to be eternal. You will start fighting. First, he will give two beatings to the person who is telling, trying to take away from the family and property. Now, this is tamasika. Means intense holding, I have become matter. Tamas is converting chaitanya into matter. As if matter, it is having tremendous gravity now. Now Sri Ramakrishna says, this itself you can utilize to realize God. Om Shanti 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 Hari hi Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur